it's Cassandra Arnold. Um, I just, uh, before I go to bed, I wanted to share with you guys again my book. Um, I'm Cassandra Arnold. If you haven't heard about me, just better ask somebody. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Just kidding. Um, my name is Cassandra Arnold, but you know, my whole reason for coming on is about Jesus. I have been tasked with sharing my story to help other people meet God, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Um, my book is called Atheist to Believer, My Story. This was written and published by yours truly. Um, I will read the back of my book to you, which can be purchased on atheisttobeliever.com. Um, and I don't, it is linked somewhere on my YouTube channel, but it's A-T-H-E-I-S-T-T-O. B E L I E V E R dot com. But anywho, um, that's my website, but this is what my book says. The description. This book was written in obedience to God. It is my personal account of how Jesus himself saved me from lifelong atheism. Please read if you'd like to find out how he turned an atheist who had no belief in God since childhood into a blood-washed believer. I didn't believe in the existence of God or anything supernatural. I couldn't believe in anything I couldn't see for myself. In this book, I detail several supernatural experiences that led to my rebirth in Christ. Um, so... Yes, I'm coming at you straight from my living room to let you know, if you don't already know, Jesus lives. He is real. He wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with everybody. There's nobody left out unless you leave yourself out. He wants to know you. You need to know him. It says in the Bible, so many people are going to say, Jesus, Jesus, um, Lord, Lord, I, and I'm not, this is not a direct quote, but, um, this is from my memory, but, um, you know, so it's not word for word correct. You got to look the verse up yourself, but it says something like, Lord, Lord, we did all these wonderful works in your name. We cast out demons and did stuff in your, did wonderful works in your name. And, you know, so they think they're saved. They say, Lord, Lord. They think that he's their Lord. And then he'll say to them, uh, depart from me, doers of iniquity. I never knew you. So that's why it is so important. You got to know God. He got to know you. Eternity, that's nothing to play with. It's a very, very long time. Jesus is the only one who can get you in, who has your golden ticket to life. Life meaning not death, death meaning hell, which is the only place where we are separated from God. You know, we have free will. We don't have to choose God. We don't have to love God. You know, he gave us the free will to choose. So. Um, you know, it's just like, if you don't like God's rules, you don't want to, you, you know, you don't want to be, you know, acceptable to God. You want to be acceptable to yourself, do whatever you want to do, not give your life over to God, not allow him to change you and everything. That's our own decision. We have to make that for, we have to make that decision for ourselves. And, um, you know, so... It's just so important, you know, God, it don't matter who you are, what you've done, what you have done, what you haven't done, you know, it does not matter. Jesus is not going to turn you away. 
just turn to him even right now and just talk to him he talks back he does he's real he's still alive he's not going to talk back to you just because you decided to talk to him one day we have to see he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so you can't just say one word and expect oh some huge miracle like the heavens to open and you're totally healed and you know you hear the voice of God no you have to be diligent in seeking him I had I was facing 25 plus years in jail and prison meaning I was not gonna see the light of day had I got convicted it took that much for me to you know really try to see if God was real and really begin to seek him and I fasted to the point where I lost almost 60 pounds or maybe even over 60 pounds I don't I don't even quite remember I lost a whole lot of weight and um, anywho the night before court that was the first time Jesus spoke to me and it was out loud and he said be not worried and though all those charges they were ended up dismissed so like I said it does not matter he wants you because he still wanted me you know even though like you know I didn't I wasn't necessarily guilty per se but anywho um, I was guilty by association but either way you know even that that situation I've done so much like you know so many sins sinful life just like anybody else but he still loves me and he still loves you and he he still wanted me as his own he wanted to possess my soul just like the devil be coming he wants your soul too the devil wants your soul because he knows he's going to spend eternity in the lake of fire he has no choice he has no chance to get out of it so he wants your soul but guess what jesus well yeah because he wants to take you know as many souls with him as he can that's his whole existence because he has nothing else but jesus he wants you to come to paradise with him he wants to possess your soul he wants to love your soul he wants to find pleasure in you he wants to delight in you he wants to look after you he wants to take care of you he wants you to serve him bow down to him worship him choose him that's why that's why God gave us free will he didn't want to make robots to you know even with the angels the angels he lost some of the angels because they decided to go with Satan you know when he let you know when he was Lucifer in heaven you know everything that transpired some like I think a third of the angels you know they're you know they're demons now because God gave them free will so God gave us free will and you know we can do with it what we will but I choose life I choose God and that's sorry I, that was my my neighbor's walk well, my neighbor's footstep but um hold on one sec sorry I had to remember what I was talking about but anywho yes God didn't want to create robots that were just going to accept his will you know or you know he didn't want to have some like pre-programmed and this is my interpretation but God didn't want some pre-programmed you know but like angels or humans or whatever he didn't want to create something that was pre-programmed to love him he wants us to choose to love him and in return he's willing to give us paradise forever because guess what we don't die yes our physical bodies die but we are still we're still going to be alive once our bodies die because you know our soul is what is operating this flesh you know in conjunction with our brain and everything but there's a soul in here you know you're seeing my physical form but if I will you know one day when I am you know when I go home to heaven this flesh is going to be just an empty lifeless flesh and my soul will then go one of two places 
you know, and I'm choosing heaven because we do know which, where we're walking. You know, we do know where we're walking toward. Because if we're not serving God, we know we're serving Satan. Um, and it's unfortunate because it's not God's will that any should perish. And perish means go to hell. It's not God's will for any of us to perish. But the Bible says, it basically says, more people go to hell than heaven. Because it says something like, um... You know the the path to destruction is a wide you know is a wide path it's easy to destruction is hell um in my interpretation destruction is hell it's easy to walk that path the and, and then it goes on to say also that you know the way to life which the only way to eternal life is you know with the Lord is through the Lord but in his, you know, his free gift, his sacrifice that he made for all of us who accept any, who, anyone who accepts him. But anyways, it says it takes, um, you know, it says something like it's a, it's a narrow gate. It's a narrow, it's a narrow path to life and, um, there's few who find it. It says something very similar to that. You have to look that one up too, but you know there's few people that find the path to heaven and it's very 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 simple seek jesus maintain a seek and maintain a relationship with jesus he will perfect all that concerns you with through your walk with him it's not rocket science i used to think there was no way i could ever make it into heaven because it's too many roles you know it's too much to, to try to you know it's just too much you know it seems overwhelming like it's just unattainable but it's not for us it's a free gift of salvation we just have to accept jesus as our lord and savior he does the rest it's a walk with him it's not like oh one day you accept jesus and you're instantly perfect and ready for heaven no no you, i i mean I'm, of course god could do it that way if he wanted if he wants to if you know if that's his choice but it's a walk Nine times out of ten, it's going to be a walk. You have to, you know, he delivers you up from stuff. As time goes on, you get better and he changes you and, you know, you know, you just develop more and more of a deeper relationship with him. And, anywho, so, yes, I am working on my second book right now. I will be sure to let each and every one of you who views my channel to I will let each and every one of y'all know when that book drops because I will be releasing a video about it as soon as I have it in my hand um but yes this one this is a major read right here this is a really great read especially if you know somebody who's you know going through anything this book is for everybody it don't matter if you're an atheist, if you're a brand new Christian, if you've been a Christian for ever, you know, from forever, from as long as you can remember. I believe everybody should read this book because there's, you know, there's something to be gained from reading this. It's it will bless you. It is a blessing. It's not. Um, it's for sale on Amazon. It's only twelve bucks. It is not. It's somewhere around twelve bucks. It's not free, but. God didn't want me to give it away for free. This is worth money. And, you know, it's, it will help you. It will bless your life. And I have read a chapter of this book. And I will be reading some chapters on my channel. Um, but I have a video on my channel of me reading one of the chapters about abortion. And, um... And just further commentating on that and stuff in the video but yes it is very very good book and I will be why well, plan on at least plan to come on and read you know a chapter of my book or you know a few pages you know just as as I'm led by the Lord by the Lord I will be coming on reading my book expanding on my book you know, giving some further commentation on my book 
and you know just on my story on my opinions um i have a lot of wis i've been blessed with a lot of wisdom and um you know it's just like pretty much you name it i've been through it or gone through it because i'm still going through a lot but i'm making it through you know only by the grace of god it's not up to anybody in this world it's really not even well yeah it's up to me because i have to participate but I, but nobody's going to decide your destiny for you nobody god can open up doors that no man can shut none none can't even come near the door you know don't matter who supports you who doesn't as long as god is supporting you that is all that counts that's all that matters because at the end of the day, he's the one who will open up the doors. He's the one that will make sure you have food on the table, that you have gas in your car, that you have your health, your strength, and, you know, that everything that you need. He's the only one who's going to care about you when nobody else does. <laughs> he's the only one. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're you know if you're i see drug addicts all the time um you know standing on the side of the street begging for money and you know it's it's you know i watch dr phil all the time and it's hard because like the other day i gave a guy like a homeless guy like seven bucks or something and when i was driving past them i was like don't spend it on drugs and he looked all sad and I was like I'm just joking like because I didn't know what else to say but anywho I just know from you know I just know from watching Dr. Phil and stuff that when people are on heroin they have to use that heroin or else they could like die they get very ill which they do need to go to detox and try to get clean but ah <sighs> So it's difficult, you know, because you want to help people, but you also don't want to, like, support somebody's habit because I don't have money to give to somebody for them to spend it on drugs. You know, he had a sign saying that he was hungry. And it's like, I want God to be able to tell me when I was hungry, you fed me, you know. So it's like, you just have to, uh, like... I guess, you know, of course, pray about it, but, yeah, um, I'm, I just brought that up because I had made a video on here saying to give money to homeless people, and I do fully believe that homeless people do need support, it's just, you really should pray on it first, you know, to see if God can reveal to you like what their motives are for the money or just simply ask God should I do this because I felt very strongly led that day to give him that money so yeah anywho and I seen Michael Jordan well somebody um, some other famous guy talking sorry <laughs> something fell in the kitchen Anywho, and Michael Jordan was saying, well, they had said, Michael Jordan said, um, if they can say, do you have a dollar, they can also say, well, um, welcome to McDonald's. <laughs> and I mean, that's true because, you, I mean, you got to start, you have to start somewhere. But, um, yeah, I definitely believe in supporting people who can't support themselves for whatever, for whatever reason. If you're well enough, well enough off to where you can spare a dollar here or a few dollars or even you know however much you can spare it's so important because if you were ever I've been in that position that you know I couldn't take care of myself financially and you know I'm still becoming you know financially stable but I just know how important it is to help a fellow human out every now and again <sighs> um and what else did I want to talk about? But yes, my 
website is atheist2believer.com. Um, the link to purchase my book is on there. My book is available in paperback and also ebook, which is also with the ebook there is an audible option. So if you purchase the ebook, you will be able to also have that played to you, so you don't have to actually sit there and read it. Or if you um, have any eye issues or um, possible blindness or anything, you can also it be it can be read to you with the um, ebook version. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, let me see. I wasn't going to read anything, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and read the first chapter for you guys. If you watched this far, I am going to go ahead and give you the first chapter of my book, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, chapter one, my first supernatural experience. Back in the um, sub subtitle, it's Backstory. I was living in Virginia. I had just arrived from Arizona. I was 16 years old. I was an atheist. At that time, I believed all there was was this life. No afterlife, no heaven, no hell, no angels, no demons, no God. Looking back, I realized it was a carefree or careless and purposeless existence. I had so many questions about life with so little answers. The pain I would feel when thinking about death and endings. I thought that when you die, that's it. You cease to exist. How sad that made me. How could there be a God in such a cruel and hopeless world? I didn't believe it, though I wanted to. I couldn't imagine that an unseen God existed. I believed it was a fairy tale and that those who believed were foolish, foolish, silly, irrational. The event. It was the middle of the night. As I lay prone in my favorite sleep position, I'm going to pause that right there. Prone is a medical word. It means like laying on your stomach face down, um, laying face down. That's my, like on your, laying on your stomach, that's my favorite sleep position. I didn't want to write like, I didn't want to write all that, so I just wrote prone, but yeah, most people probably don't know what prone, you know, is, so I probably should have just wrote that out. Anywho, as I lay prone in my favorite sleep position, I awoke to someone jumping onto the bed at my feet. Surely it was my sibling. As I turned to see who it was and utter my sibling's name, nobody was there. My heart dropped, but I shrugged it off. As I turned back to lay my face on the pillow, my, my face had barely begun to touch the pillow before, boom, it happened. My worst nightmare became a reality. As my face began to touch the pillow, something invisible violently flipped me up into the air and onto my back. It began to choke me. Uh, I'll pause right there. Um, yes. When I say that something invisible violently flipped me up in the air and onto my back, I literally came up off the bed. I was laying on my stomach. Oh, yeah, I'll put my hand like this. This is the bed. This is me laying on my stomach. Literally, whatever it was, brought me up out of my bed like this, flipped me over onto my back, and I landed right back on the bed on my back. But I was literally taken up off the bed and flipped over. And it had begun, begun to choke me. I felt the hands and the pressure around my neck. I became paralyzed. It felt as though there was a 600 pound weight on top of my body preventing me from moving. I could only move my eyes. As I struggled to breathe, I remember thinking, I guess this is how I'm going to die. Just when I accepted that my life was ending, it stopped. I sat up in bed frozen in fear. As I tried to scream for help, all that would come out was a whisper. 
I sat there quietly whispered quiet I sat there and quietly whispered my sibling's name over and over and over knowing that she was all the way downstairs and was asleep I was too scared to scream too scared to move I whispered in vain the same name until sunrise I was traumatized yeah I knew that my sibling was downstairs asleep on the couch like yeah they would definitely would have been able to hear me had I yelled their name and possibly they would have woken up but I was so traumatized that all I could get out was a whisper I was just like whispering their name all night literally I was I was traumatized I told my family what happened they did not believe it they said I was dreaming I wished it was a dream but it was all too real I know some may write this off as sleep paralysis I have experienced sleep paralysis many times this event was not sleep paralysis sleep paralysis does not violently flip your entire body over without your consent and choke you. I felt this being's hands wrapped around my neck. I also now know that demons have the ability to paralyze your body. Though sleep paralysis is a real thing. The body becomes paralyzed during sleep to allow the body to rest and so we don't physically act out our dreams. And sometimes we can wake up while the body is still paralyzed. Which brings another point. I was not paralyzed due to sleep paralysis. I mean, I was not paralyzed due to being asleep because when I awoke, I turned to see who jumped into my bed. I was not paralyzed at that point. I only became paralyzed after being flipped onto my back. This all rules out sleep paralysis. Yeah, because with sleep paralysis, you wake up still paralyzed from your sleep. When I woke up, I was not paralyzed. I literally turned and looked just like that I was not you know it was not sleep paralysis this is every let me check my okay I gotta hurry up on my five percent all right this is every child's fear atheist and believer alike that an invisible or visible boogeyman would attack them in the darkness as they lay in their beds no way to protect themselves how does a child analyze what happened no family believed me there was nobody who could relate or understand or explain to me what happened as i write this book i just turned 30 years old four days ago in my 30 years i have now had numerous supernatural experiences before i experienced them myself there was no way I could imagine or even begin to believe that a demon or angel can manifest themselves in human-like form, that they can present themselves visibly or invisibly, that they existed. I had no way of knowing that there was an unseen spiritual realm in the midst of us because I couldn't see it with my physical eyes and hadn't experienced it for myself. I assumed there was no possibility it could exist. I didn't believe in God let alone the possibility of him or his angel showing up on earth or his enemy, the devil and his minions could be real and physically hurt people in real life. It's hard to imagine what you have not seen with your own eyes or experienced for yourself. Life after. After the event, I did not process what happened. I tried to pretend it didn't happen as I did with many other traumatic events I had experienced in my life. Let me check, check my battery. Ugh. Not 3%. Give me one second, please. Gotta plug in my phone. I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to um, move my location so that I could plug my phone in. Um, okay. Let me see where I was at. And I do have a shirt on. Sorry, I, I got hot. I don't want to put the AC on so y'all can still hear, hear me. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Let me see where I was at. I'm trying to be quiet because my kids are sleeping. All right. 
Okay, I went on living, still an atheist, still very broken and very confused. Almost a year had gone past and I met and I had met my and I had met the boyfriend I had during that time. He was a Christian and had been all his life. He believed in heaven, hell, God, angels, the devil, demons. But when I opened up to him soon after meeting him about what I experienced that night, he didn't believe it. To him, my account of that night was just as much a fairy tale as his God was to me. A week or two went by. One morning, he was visibly distressed. Concerned, I asked him, what's wrong? Reluctantly, he stated, I believe you. I said, what happened? And the same, the same, the same thing that happened. It's like, no, I'm sorry. I'm joking. I'm sorry. I'm tired. It's late. This, the same thing that happened to you, he says, and explains his ordeal. Yeah, so one morning I got up and he was looking crazy. He was looking like all scared and like, like, I don't know. He was just looking like crazy, not out of his mind. He just looked distressed, like something was really wrong with him. And I was like, what's wrong? And he was like, I believe you. He was like, I believe you. And then he told me what happened to him. He was like, it happened to me. Same thing. <laughs> like, and he told me what happened. And I was like, see, now you believe me, don't you? <laughs> but anywho, um, knowing what I know now, I realized that by him and I fornicating together, that gave the demon that attacked me legal access to attack, to attack him as well. Even after that experience, I was naive. I didn't equate what happened that, that night to a demon. I didn't know what happened. All I knew was an invisible being attacked me. I thought maybe it was a ghost of some sort, but I mostly just tried to block out and forget what ha uh, forget about what occurred. I now know it was a demon, a grim reaper who thought it was going to collect my, sco my soul and, and escort me to the pits of hell to be added to the rest of the souls that were destined for eternal torture and punishment for refusing to believe in and accept Jesus, the Son of God. But God, it wasn't my time to leave this earth yet. He spared my life and would spare me many more times to come as my life went on, which I am thankful and grateful for now. But there were many times in my life that I didn't care if I lived or died. I wasn't too concerned with what happened to me. I just know... Oh, sorry. I didn't know it. I didn't know it at the time, but I carry the Joseph anointing. I had lost too much. My career, houses, cars, my dignity, my oldest child, family members, friends, and even my sanity. All the loss and betrayal comes along with the Joseph anointing. And I've, I'm going to pause right there. I've heard so many people who, who um, say they carry the Joseph anointing. They say they lost everything. At one, at at least one point in their life, they lost everything, and yep, I lost everything, and you know I'm still building back up, but yeah, it's it's devastating. But yeah, I lost everything, but you know what that did? It brought me so close to God, and you know, that's what He wanted. That's I think that's the whole point of why He does that. Um, is to prepare us for His purposes. Anywho, I had nothing to live for. The closer I got to God, the more people turned their backs on me. Yeah, I'm going to pause right there. Like, I had one family member. And if this family member happens to see this, you know I love you. But I had one family member who told me that um, whenever I would talk about Jesus, they um, that's how they knew that. I was I wasn't doing well mentally like I was losing my mind I was about to go through like a episode or something but no like it was just God drawing me closer to him but anywho um the more people count yeah the more the more people turn their backs on me the more people counted me out though I felt betrayed at the time God had caused the separation and even pulled me out of my family so that he could use me. All glory to God. God knows best. His ways are higher than ours. 
he has full vision. We are very limited in that department without his help. Yeah, we can't see nothing he don't show us, really. Like, he knows the full picture. He knows everything. Like, he knows what's going to happen. He knows what he has planned for us. He knows what we're going to choose to do, what we're going to not do. Everything. So, it's so best to just rely on God for everything. I have come to a point in my life, you know, for a while now, I don't make major decisions without consulting God first, most of the time, but especially major decisions. Yes, I consult God, you know, because he's helped me out so many times on everything and it's so worth it to really know God to have that close relationship so that you're not making any unnecessary mistakes but I hope you guys enjoyed that um that reading of my book there's a whole lot more chapters I think like 10 more chapters or something nine or ten more chapters but um yeah and I, like I said too I also have another video on here of me reading another chapter in my book so feel free to watch that if you'd like I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for bed I'm very tired at this point but I hope you enjoyed my video I thank you so much for watching God bless you shout out to prophet Eli much love man of God all right thanks for watching catch you next time like subscribe share let you know comment leave me some love whatever you want to do but yeah thanks thank you so much for your support world talk have a good one